Hey guys, hello gorgeous. With the impending release of Cobra Kai, I decided to go back and watch the old Karate Kid movies to refresh my memory. For those that don't know, Cobra Kai is a new series coming to YouTube Red, which continues the original Karate Kid saga. More specifically, it's told from the perspective of Johnny, the villain, the young blonde bully from the original Karate Kid movie. And it'll follow how Johnny reopens the Cobra Kai dojo and he's basically the antithesis of Mr. Miyagi in the first Karate Kid movie. He is a terrible sensei who teaches horrible lessons, everything that karate is not about. So that should be interesting. It looks pretty funny. Uh, but going back and re-watching the original Karate Kid, which I remember seeing at the theater when I was a little kid. But Karate Kid is one of those movies, watching it again as an adult, I now realize just how good that movie was. As a young boy, I thought Daniel was the coolest and uh, I was like millions of kids worldwide doing the crane kick. But this movie actually has so much heart and soul that I don't remember it having uh, when I watched it as a kid. And I've seen it since then. Uh, years back, uh, I watched it at home on the projector and uh, same thing. I remember thinking, wow, this movie is a lot more slow paced, but in a good way and has a lot more heart and soul that I remember it ha having. It's a small story. It's about uh, a young kid named Daniel LaRusso, who is moving from New Jersey to California. So he's a fish out of water. And plus he is being brutally bullied by the kids at school. Daniel knows a little bit of uh, karate, as it's properly pronounced. I, I will be calling it karate because I'm from this part of the world. Um, but it's interesting to see him being bullied and he's not a complete whelp. He's not a complete wimp. He does get his butt kicked a couple times in this movie. But what I really liked is that he can put up a tiny bit of a fight because one of the worst things for kids who are being bullied is just to roll over and die, to, to just clam up, shut up and take it and whimper afterwards. I love Daniel's fighting spirit. Um, early on, uh, one thing that this movie really establishes is that Daniel LaRusso is an incredibly likable character. His empathy is very high. There's little things they do throughout this movie, even in the beginning stages, to illustrate to you Daniel San's uh, empathy, such as uh, he meets this young guy who says, oh, that lady over there, she's crazy. And Daniel goes, no, she's kind of nice. And he also fills up a water bowl for a, you know, a little pet. So these, it's these little things that show you, although he might be a little bit rough around the edges, that that is because he is a product of his environment. Um, but at heart, he's a good guy. And that's what really makes this movie so great is that Daniel starts off as that rough piece of stone and the Karate Kid, the first movie, uh, is all about chipping away, um, to, to, uh, reveal this really amazing character. And the person who does a lot of that chipping is Mr. Miyagi, played by the late, great Pat Morita and uh, he is another uh, vital integral part of this movie. Uh, the relationship between Daniel and Miyagi is such a beautiful one. Um, it's so inspiring. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there who have their lives together, uh, who know what they need to do in order to make their lives work and also to help people around them. But, you know, for even for those people, who uh, know the score and know what needs to be done. Movies like this are a really, really beautiful reminder. Um, one of the best lessons that Miyagi gives Daniel is to breathe. And that's something I don't think is practiced a lot in this day and age. And I really appreciated the reminder in this movie that sometimes the solution to many of life's difficult problems is just breathe. And we hear that expression all the time, just breathe but it's how you breathe. And I think that there is improper breathing technique and Miyagi, while he doesn't give Daniel a lot of specific karate instruction, he gives him very specific breathing instruction. And that really stresses how important it is to breathe properly. Deep breath in through the nose, big breath out through the mouth. And he keeps repeating it and repeating it. And sometimes Daniel is a little uh, brash, hard-headed, 
uh, impatient, young impatient man, but Miyagi hammers it into him. Uh, I love the lessons of the wax on, wax off, and sand uh, this way and sand that way, and paint up, paint down. All of these uh, things that don't look at all related to karate, and it actually it's Miyagi building muscle memory, um, which is the secret to martial arts. It's to uh, have that uh, no-mindedness that Bruce Lee talked about for his uh, style of Kung Fu. The, the secret to uh, the greatest martial arts is a no-mindedness. So often what's portrayed in movies is the guys who are screaming and snarling and they pump their fist and they take so much pride uh, in winning. And that's what the Cobra Kai guys are all about. Uh, they definitely have it wrong and their teacher is a piece of garbage. Uh, another great uh, bit of wisdom from Mr. Miyagi is there are no bad students, only bad teachers. And Kreese is one of the worst. But uh, the greatest martial artists, the ones that we should be emulating, uh, trying to emulate, are the ones not who are growling and sneering and and we, you see that in MMA as well. It's the showmen who make the most money. But the greatest ones are like Bruce Lee who are no-minded. And when a punch comes in, it's not even an effort. It's not even um, a calculation to block. It is no-mindedness. And that's what Daniel does in this movie. He gets into that point where uh, the brain is no longer thinking and performing the karate. The body is simply doing it because... He is in that state of no-mindedness, and when you achieve that, there is no fist pumping, there is no cheering, there is no adrenaline rush of victory. There is simply do what is necessary, do what is appropriate in your situation, and then keep going. Keep waiting for the next opportunity to be appropriate. So that's what I think this movie really gets across very well. It is a movie about a young man in a karate tournament, but it's not all about the thrill of victory. It's all about finding inner peace. I did a book review a while ago for one of my favorite books ever, uh, one of the real true guiding lights of my life called Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And I've talked about in my toy reviews how Optimus Prime is my hero because he is the ultimate pop culture peaceful warrior. Well, Mr. Miyagi is another iconic pop culture peaceful warrior. Uh, he is so similar to Socrates from Way of the Peaceful Warrior. He is a man who has the ability to kick anybody's ass, but he does not have the desire. And that's what makes a peaceful warrior. Um, those are truly the greatest people in my eyes. The ones who can physically dominate anybody, but they don't want to and they wish they didn't have to. And when they do, uh, when they are forced to do it, it takes a toll on them. There is, again, no fist pumping. There is no antics like you see in the UFC or boxing or football or any of those other sports. There is somberness. There is reflection. So if you haven't seen Karate Kid in quite some time, I would highly recommend watching this again, uh, especially if you're going to check out Cobra Kai, because I think this is going to be a real Rocky 1 and Rocky 6 type of situation, or uh, First Blood, Rambo 1 and Rambo 4 type of situation. I think the people, from what I've heard at least, um, the people doing Cobra Kai really get the essence of the first Karate Kid movie. This isn't a, a quick money grab and this isn't a spoof or a parody or a reimagining uh, one of the people who seems to have been the real holdout for the original Karate Kid saga to continue uh, was Ralph Macchio uh, he said on interview shows where he just he didn't want to be involved anymore because he felt like it was getting too far away from what made the first movie so beautiful it's natural in Hollywood to just go bigger and better and badder more badass and so the fact that he is involved in Cobra Kai, I think, speaks volumes uh, about this upcoming series. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that Cobra Kai will have the same type of heart and soul, despite the fact that it's following Johnny, who is apparently a piece of garbage in this new one. But if you are a fan of those old 80s uh, and, and before type of movies with real heart and soul. If uh, heart and soul is more important to you than badassery, then I would highly recommend The Karate Kid.
Got a Karate Kid memory you like to share? Scroll down and go to town. And to join the tribe, chop subscribe. Nerdmas Day.